In this lecture, I'll provide an overview of different bond sectors and instruments. Let us start by talking about government securities. When the government issues debt or when any government issues debt, that is referred to as sovereign debt. Perhaps the most well-known or widely traded sovereign debt is the US sovereign debt in the form of US securities. I will talk about US securities in more detail on the next slide. But the key point about US Treasury securities is that they are perceived to have no credit risk. Now this has been the general perception but the reason I put a question mark here is because of the recent downgrade of the US debt by S&P. This happened in August 2011, a major event which I think is interesting from a general perspective but it is a fairly controversial point. For the sake of the CFA exam, I think we can safely assume or generally assume that US Treasury securities are considered to not have any credit risk. So essentially, uh, we can still say that there isn't really any danger of the US government defaulting, at least from the perspective of the CFA reading. In terms of non-US sovereign debt, so this is all other countries, so this would be you know, Pakistan, Greece, New Zealand, etc. So any other country in the world, when that issues debt, we can broadly categorize it as non-US sovereign debt. Now, when a non-US country, such as let's say Pakistan issues sovereign debt, there will be two kinds of debt issued by Pakistan. One is debt issued in the local currency, which is uh, the Pakistani rupee. And then there will also be debt that is issued in, say, dollars or euro, so in an international currency. And generally, when rating agencies such as uh, S&P and Moody's provide a rating for Pakistan's sovereign debt, they will have two different ratings. One rating will be for the rupee denominated bonds and another will be for the bonds denominated in a international currency such as dollar and euro. And this makes sense because clearly the ability of the Pakistani government to repay a rupee denominated bond is much higher. So the credit rating for this will generally be higher than the credit rating for a bond that is issued in a, in a different currency. So at a, la at a higher level, that's all we really need to know right now. And this example that I have given for Pakistan uh, applies obviously for other countries too. Now another general point is how do governments issue securities? And uh, there is a lot of detail here, but from the CFA perspective, you just need to know a little bit. You need to know that broadly speaking, there are four issuance methods, a uh, regular cycle auction with a single price. This means that the government through the central bank, let's say, issues government securities and there might be a regular cycle. So every month, for example, there might be an issue. And single price means that there is a single price at which the bonds are then sold. So obviously a single price which corresponds to a single yield at which the bonds are finally issued. And this would be clearly the highest yield that the government is getting. That's what it will sell the T-bills for or the treasury securities for to, to, to all the bidders. Regular cycle, regular cycle auction multiple price. Again, this is an auction, but they are multiple prices. So this will be regular. So this again might be say monthly, but the bills, the government securities can be then sold at different prices to different bidders. Number three is a ad hoc auction system. This is where the government issues treasury securities slash government securities when the economic environment is suitable. In other words, when the government is getting the best rate for issuing bonds. In a TAP system, additional bonds of 
previously outstanding bond issues are auctioned. Another general term is on the run and off the run. On the run securities refers to securities that have been very recently issued and off the run securities are securities that have been issued some time ago. Generally people prefer, investors prefer on the run securities and since these are preferred the yields on on the run securities are slightly lower than off the run. In other words since investors prefer these the price of on the run would be slightly more than the price of off the run securities. Now let's talk about United States Treasury securities in a little more detail. Broadly speaking, there are three large categories that we will worry about. The first is fixed principal treasuries. So these are government securities that make regular coupon payments and then a fixed principal slash par value is paid at the end. Within this category, we have treasury bills, treasury notes and treasury bonds. Generally, treasury bills have a maturity of less than one year. Treasury notes have a mature be maturity between one and ten years and treasury bonds have a maturity greater than ten years. Treasury bills are typically pure discount or zero coupon. So classic example of a T-bill is say the six month T-bill or the three month T-bill which is a pure discount instrument. Treasury notes make coupon payments and so do treasury bonds and as you have seen in previous examples both notes and bonds make coupon payments semi-annually. We also have inflation indexed treasuries which are called TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protection Securities and we also have the concept of STRIPS which are actually created by the private sector but they are created from, from typically from fixed principal treasuries so they are considered credit risk free. More on this on the next slide. So let's talk about Treasury Inflation Protection Securities or TIPS in a little more detail. Essentially, when an investor invests in a, in a, in a treasury inflation protected security, he is protecting himself against inflation. Now, how does it work? For, uh, for a TIPS security, the coupon rate is fixed, but the par value is adjusted for inflation and they make these securities make semi-annual payments where each payment is equal to half times the coupon rate times the inflation adjusted par value. To understand this let's look at the example that is used in the curriculum and I have just put it in a question form. Let's say that you as an investor purchase a hundred thousand dollar par value tips with coupon rate equal to three percent and let's say the inflation rate for the first six months is three percent and then for the next six months is one percent what are the first two coupon payments the way this works is as follows so let's just model this in the form of the two periods that we are initially concerned with when you make the investment the par value is hundred thousand and we we are now told that for the first six month period inflation is equal to 3%. The way tips work is that it is the the par value that is adjusted based on inflation. The coupon rate will remain 3.5% and another key point to note here is that all numbers quoted are on a semi-annual, I'm sorry, all numbers are quoted on an annualized basis. Payments however are made semi-annually. So in terms of the timeline this is time zero this is the end of the first period which is 0 0.5 years or six months and this is the end of the second period which is the end of year one so what is the par value at the end of the first six month period since we adjust the par value based on inflation and inflation is three percent on an annualized basis but on a six month basis the inflation is 1.5 so we adjust this by 1.5% because that's the inflation for six months. 
So if we increase 100,000 by 1.5%, 1 we will get 101,500. So that's the new par value over here based on the 3% inflation number. Now what is the coupon payment? The coupon payment would be equal to the coupon rate, the 6 month coupon rate. Notice that the annualized coupon rate is 3.5%. So the 6 month coupon rate is 1.75%. So the coupon payment is 1.75% of the par value which is equal to 1776. So this is our coupon payment at the end of the first period. Now what about the end of the second period? Now we are told that for the next six months, so for this six month period, the annualized inflation is 1%. Since the annualized inflation is 1%, the inflation, so let me just write this here, annualized inflation here is 1%, but for the six month period then we take half this number which is 0.5%. So the par value will now become 101,500 plus 0.5% of this number which is 102,515. So that's the new par value. The coupon payment again the percentage doesn't change. So the coupon payment is now equal to 1.75% of of this new par value and that is equal to 1794. So you need to know this calculation. The simple idea is that for tips the coupon rate remains the same but the par value is adjusted based on inflation. Now let's talk about stripped treasury securities. The point here is this, that there is a demand for zero coupon bonds with no credit risk. If you recall from my statements earlier, treasury notes which have maturities between 1 and 10 years all make coupon payments. Similarly, treasury bonds which, are, which have maturities greater than 10 years also make coupon payments. But there is a demand in the market for let's say 3 year zero coupon bonds. So to meet that demand we have dealers who are authorized by the government to, to, to essentially buy treasury securities and strip them. Now how does this work? I'll just give this example and then come back to the point above. Let's say that a dealer buys a hundred million worth of treasury of a treasury note with 10 year maturity and coupon rate equal to 10%. So with this security, remember since coupon payments are semi-annual, we really have 21 payments. Why are there 21 payments? Because if you look at from time 0 and then period 1 which is 6 months, period 2 which is 1 year, all the way down to period 20 which is the end of 10 years, the, if the coupon rate is 10% annually that means every 6 months we have a 5% payment. 5% 5 of 100 million is 5 million. So we have a 5 million coupon payment every period including the last period so that's 20 coupon payments plus the 100 million par value payment at the end. So if a dealer makes this investment and then he can individually sell each of these coupon strips. So effectively then he has created 21 different zero coupon securities. The securities that are based on coupon payments are called are denoted as CI so these are essentially the interest only strips and the coupon payment based on the par value is called a principal strip and denoted by PI. Now hopefully you understand what treasury strips now means. A, a, simp a, a, a tangential point here is that treasury strips also called zeros are taxed on implicit interest. So that means let's say that you invest in this 10 year zero coupon bond or here it would be a 10 year zero coupon strip. So that means that after 20 years you will get 
100 million. So clearly this has a present value based on 100 million discounted at the appropriate rate. So you will not get cash flow for 20 periods or 10 years, but every year there is a certain gain in your value of the investment and that gain is taxed. So even though you are not getting cash flow from this security, but you have to pay tax. So that is considered a negative factor.